Have you ever pondered over how Japan, a country deeply rooted in tradition, balances the surge of tourism with the preservation of its rich culture? Over the past two decades, the land of the rising sun has witnessed an unprecedented boom in tourism. This influx of visitors, while economically beneficial, poses a serious cultural conundrum from the neon-lit skyscrapers of Tokyo to the tranquil shrines of Kyoto, the struggle to maintain cultural integrity amidst the torrent of tourists is palpable. Japan is grappling with this delicate balancing act, to welcome the world yet safeguard the unique traditions that define its identity. As the country navigates this cultural tightrope, it's not just about managing the crowds but also about ensuring that the quintessence of its heritage remains intact. As we delve deeper, let's focus on two iconic places grappling with this issue, Kyoto and Mount Fuji. Their stories illuminate Japan's ongoing struggle to harmonize the allure of tourism with the preservation of its cultural soul. Kyoto, a city known for its stunning temples and elusive geisha, has had its fair share of tourist troubles. As the city's cultural heartbeat, the Gion district has been particularly hard hit, with its narrow streets packed to the brim and instances of misbehaving tourists on the rise, it was evident something had to change. In response, Kyoto's authorities have drawn a line in the sand, or more precisely, in the cobblestone. Tourists are now banned from certain private alleys in Gion. Signs are erected in English and Japanese, a clear warning for visitors to respect these off-limit areas, those who choose to ignore these directives. Well, they could find themselves lighter by 10,000 yen, a hefty fine by any standards. This bold move is part of a wider effort to protect not just the geisha and their traditional way of life, but the very soul of Kyoto itself. But Kyoto isn't the only place wrestling with the influx of tourists. Mount Fuji, Japan's iconic symbol of natural beauty, also faces the brunt of booming tourism. This majestic peak, a beacon of tranquility and a testament to the nation's natural splendor, is increasingly swarmed by eager tourists each year. The sheer volume of visitors has begun to take a toll both on the mountain's fragile ecosystem and on the experience of climbing itself. Local authorities, recognizing the need for sustainable tourism, have taken action. They've decided to limit the number of daily climbers, a move aimed at reducing environmental impact and ensuring the safety of those who embark on the ascent. A fee has now been introduced for every climber. This isn't merely a revenue-generating measure. It's a step towards enforcing etiquette, maintaining the mountain's sanctity and preserving the unique experience it offers. Yet, in the face of these challenges, Japan is paradoxically courting more visitors. A delicate balance indeed between preservation and progress, tradition and innovation. In a twist, Japan has launched a digital nomad program to address its declining workforce while expanding tourism. This innovative program invites foreigners to live and work remotely in Japan, thereby experiencing its culture and sights firsthand. The initiative is not restricted to a few countries, but is open to visitors from dozens of nations, including the United States. But this isn't just about boosting tourism numbers, it's a strategic move designed to infuse Japan with fresh perspectives and new ideas while helping to sustain its economy. It's a nod to the changing landscape of work, where the line between leisure and labor is increasingly blurred. This digital nomad program is a clear example of how Japan is actively seeking to strike a balance, attracting new visitors and digital workers, yet preserving its rich cultural heritage and the essence of what makes Japan unique. As Japan navigates this delicate balance between tradition and modernity, the question remains, can it welcome the world while preserving the essence of what makes it unique?